Hi, I'm Aurora and I decided to move back to my hometown in northern Italy after 10 years of living in the cosmopolitan city of Los Angeles and working in the showbiz or film and TV industry. Smart or remote working is the key that brought me and Steve to live here. I decided to surprise Steve and organize a trip down to the boot of Italy to the city of Otranto in Puglia the hill of Italy. To get there I chose a slower medium of traveling but more relaxing and that is an experience per se. This experience is the overnight train with sleeping compartment that takes you to the south, an unforgettable experience imprinted on the childhood memories of many Italians. We booked our own private compartment, a little bit more expensive but worth it considering the COVID situation. We arrived in Milan just to grab a quick dinner at the station restaurant before our train departure. When Aurora mentioned we were taking a 10-hour train ride and that would be in the sleeping car to go to the very southern tip of Italy, I was split. It was a very long ride, but on the other hand, I had a child fascination with trains. Suddenly, I had a flash of an image from the murder on the Orient Express. You know, there is something about that tangle of strangers, pressed together for days with nothing in common but the need to go from one place to another and never see each other again. Heck, why not take a sleeping car on the train? It'd be a great experience. The Airbnb we chose was right at the ancient entrance wall and the castle. Otranto has played a major role over the centuries. Already inhabited in the Paleolithic era, it was part of the Magna Graecia, a strategic city for the Romans, the bulwark of the Byzantine Empire. Dominated by Normans, Ottomans, but always defined the gateway to the east. I loved how easy it was to get around Otranto by walking. One of my favorite little beaches was actually just under the castle. Okay, that's where we're going. The first day we made the best decision to take a private boat tour to visit blue caves on the water and paradisical beaches and bays only accessible by boat. We passed Faro di Punta Palazia. That marks the easternmost point of the Italian mainland. The Trento must be getting popular this year. Just outside the little port, we saw an amazing 197-foot sailing yacht anchored and owned by the CEO of Banco Mediolanum. Also Italian rapper Fettis and his influencer wife, Cara Ferrani, were anchored on a charter catamaran just near our Trento Bay. We saw the Roman tower Torre del Serpe, or Snake's Tower, a legend that has been handed down from the dawn of time, says that the two guardians of the lighthouse found a huge snake that during the night ate all the oil lamps so they killed the snake. The girl mate of the snake, distraught by the loss, coiled around the tower and crashed part of it. The tower is obviously crushed even nowadays, and the snake wrapped around the tower is a symbol of the city. Don't forget to visit the cathedral, with the 12th century floor mosaic covering the entire floor, made by a monk and his assistants, and the relics of the martyr of the Ottoman siege that happened here. Also not to miss is a St. Peter church from 19th century AD, with beautiful Byzantine frescoes. And of course, the famous landmark of the castle of Otranto, built around 1400. Nowadays, it's an archaeological museum and an art exhibit pavilion. This castle inspired the novel Castle of Otranto by Horace Walpole. 
first published in 1764, it is generally regarded as the first Gothic novel and influenced other novels such as Mary Shelley Frankenstein, Bram Stoker Dracula, Edgar Allan Poe's Tales and Harry Potter. Our favorite place to eat was a fish to go and the best spot was to eat the meal right on the shore. But we recommended lots of other places like there is a Michelin star restaurant, a takeaway with their local specialties and a sunset advertised right on the top of the ancient city wall. And the best gelateria that makes vegan ice cream, for me a big plus, with fig and pistachios that are something to die for. An anecdote, Steve rescued this cute cat who was trapped under the sewer grate, earning the applause from the local ladies. I was sad to see miles of dead olive trees. Felled trees were infected with Kixella fastidiosa, a bacterium that slowly chokes trees to death. It has already infected 20 of Italy's 150 million olive trees, mostly in the region of Puglia. The bacteria arrived in Italy around 2010 from Costa Rica, probably from an imported ornamental plant. The bacteria is carried by a sap-feeding insect, a spittlebug called Phileneus spumarius. When the insect bites an infected leaf, it involuntarily takes the bacteria on its saliva, giving the bacteria free ride to the next plant to feed on. Through the bite, the bacteria enter the plant's vascular tissue, where water and nutrients flow, traveling countercurrent towards the roots. As the bacteria reproduce, they create a gel that clogs the channels, preventing water and nutrients from passing through. Once the plant is infected, it slowly starts dying. The bacterium has caused more than 1.2 billion in damage to Puglia's economy in the past decade. If you want to help, there is an organization from Puglia called SaveTheOliveTrees.com that help fight this problem. I want to quickly remind you that you can find my books and audiobook in Amazon. Little D is a fantasy novel in English with the audiobook version narrated by the great Gwyn Olsen and Gioco di Potere, a philosophical thriller in Italian. <laughs>